I am Pastor Dale Olson from New Creation Lutheran Church, and Joy was a part of our uh, beginnings at New Creation. Today we celebrate Joy, wife, mother, daughter, aunt, and sister, and friend. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this day that you have given to us a day of life. And as we remember the life of Joy, we give you thanks for the blessings that she gave us. We give you thanks for her life. We give you thanks that two wonderful children and the extended family, we give you thanks for all of life in Jesus Christ. Amen.
We gather this day in the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit. One of the psalms that I read in the hospital with joy, the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. At this time, if there are members of the family that would wish to have a reflection, please do so. Um, as many of you know, um, was the last 11 months. And uh, I really consider it a blessing. And uh, it's pretty incredible that we actually live in And, um, but what I want everybody to know is that Bill was very excited. We had a, we had a conversation about six months ago. She's a true believer.
of the first lesson is from Romans, the eighth chapter. What then shall we say to this? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, we will he not also give us all things with him. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, and persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I'm sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And then let us rise for our gospel today. The gospel from St. John, the 14th chapter. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and believe it also in me. In my Father's house there are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And when I go, I prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. Here ends the gospel. You may be seated. Did you ever feel powerless? Many people tell me that the number and reason why they don't change is because they feel powerless over the circumstances of life. Maybe it's just the way that you've always done it. Maybe this is the way your parents have done it. Or maybe that's just the way the relationship is. Well, if any time that you have felt powerless, you are not alone. We've all been there. Look around here today. Could we have predicted some six months ago that we would be here today celebrating the life of joy? Reminds us that life is fragile and not very predictable. What if we had a vision or some idea that we might have only 30 days to live? Would we live any differently? I know experiencing a parent who dies is not an easy journey. My father died when I was 25. That was way too young. And Eric and Cassie, my heart goes out for you because no young one in their 20s should have to endure the loss of a parent. When there's a parent that dies, there's just a hole in your soul. But as a community of Christ, we gather and we say there is more. We is, we, there is more than a, just a hole. And we are not powerless in terms of believing in God and one another. And the courage to greet each new day knowing that that day is a gift from God. I have one word today. And that word is home. Home means habit. It's a pattern of thinking and imagining. It's a parent, parent is wanting, enjoying. It's a lot of repetition in home. We say the same words often. We see the same faces. Sometimes it's filled with invitation where new faces come into our midst. The psalmist says, The Lord, you've been our dwelling place in all generations. Knowing that from the beginning of the time, God has made a home with us. From the very beginning of time, from the very beginning of generations, God too has made a home with us. Whether we're successful or tired, whether we are rich or poor, whether we are people who are full of life or just near death, God has visited us and God has made a home with us from the very beginning. Now Jesus doesn't seem to have really one home when he is doing his ministry. But he was invited to be part of an extended family 
of Mary and Martha and Lazarus, who lived in Bethany just right outside of Jerusalem. Just before Jesus is going to a ride into Jerusalem a week before that crucifixion, Mary does something that I think Joy would do. Mary takes some expensive oils and pours it over Jesus. Joy had expensive taste. What was Mary doing? She was anointing Jesus as Messiah before he would ride into Jerusalem. And all the way through his crucifixion, he would be able to smell like a king. That spread of fragrance would be everywhere. Joy could really celebrate life. And maybe some of the fragrances that she spread around, you still recall in your memories. Home is changing for you without joy. So I have a prayer for you. That some way that we could reconnect home for all of you. These two young adults without a mom, they need a reconnected home. When all is said and done, relationships are really the bottom line. Oh, we can have a lot of toys in our life. We can have a lot of frills. We can go on a lot of trips. But at the end of the day, it will be those connections that make all the difference in our world. I'm talking about a family that extends from Austin and Dallas and Minnesota and Laughlin and Houston. Kind of a new home. And this is what I see. A home where grace is experienced. Cassie, you talked about your mother teaching you about unconditional love. Well, Joy really appreciated the words that we would say at New Creation. Because the words that we would begin to say is no matter who you are, where you've been, what you've done, or what you haven't done, you are welcomed as a friend and cared for as God's special gift at New Creation. It's hard to find places where you're accepted. It's hard to find places of grace. People want to be our friends on LinkedIn and Facebook. But they don't have much time. And going through tough times with us, a lot of people fall by the wayside. But a family in Christ, we really live by grace. We know that life's not perfect. We know that we fail. We know that life treats us sometimes badly. But there's a verse that Christ taught us that says, I can do all things through Christ who, Christ who strengthens me. I pray that you can love and find that unconditional love and extend that to others and even forgive your mom for dying too early. Eric and Cassie, there will be all sorts of emotions after this day. All sorts of memories. But there is grace that your mom lived, that we lived, that we want part of your life. When we went to the last Christian concert together, she was bubbling with excitement over that concert. She didn't have to prove anything. She was just joy. She didn't have to pay at the meal, at the end of the meal. She was just simply enjoying the grace of fellowship. Another aspect of home and that is where thanking is the norm. Now, what does that mean? Someone once said, gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. It turns what we have into enough and more. It makes a house a home. It makes a stranger a friend. Joy was good at me, good about thanking me when I would visit her at the hospital. She was good about thanking about being so grateful to live with Kurt and Debbie in the last days of our life. Every morning, I can recall when I was a kid. I would come down from upstairs and my mother would be in prayer. 
I suppose she was thanking God for the day, getting ready for the day. She lived to be a full life. And I think part of it was that she just simply knew how to thank, thank God and thank one another. A home where a secret is found. Now what is the secret? First, let me tell you a story. A man walks up to a boy on the beach. He says, son, what, are you, what you're doing is noble, but you can't save all these starfish. There are thousands of them. The sun's really hot, hot and you're going to have to go in. And so, what difference does it make? And so, the little boy stopped and listened to him and then picked up one more starfish and threw it out into the ocean and said, well, I just made all the difference for that starfish. You see, the secret of life in living is giving. Some people search for that forever and ever. The next time that you feel that life has given you a bad slice then go and give to somebody. Love isn't love until you give it away. The happiest people in the world are the ones who know how to love. There are three billion people in the world who live on two dollars and less a day. Find a ministry, make a difference. It's the greatest feeling in the world. We are created by God to give. It's a secret of life. The secret of life. And finally, a home that knows the fullness of life. Jesus says, I've come in order that you might have life and have it in its fullness. Joy experienced a lot of life. She traveled to many places. She saw many people. But at the end of her life, she also came to grips with death. In one of my visits with her in the hospital, she said, you know, I'm not fearful of death. She was at peace. And she was engaged with a conversation of then that we were going to talk about. I told her about my friend who plays harp for hospice patients in Arizona. And my friend one time told me about this story. That she knew this one man and in the middle of the night, another roommate was brought into this man's room. And the next morning, she was playing harp for this guy because in the middle of the night, the fellow who was brought into the room, he died. But this man was telling her the story that went beyond that. This man said to my friend, you wouldn't believe what happened last night. You see, I woke up in the middle of the night and, and suddenly there were angels calling this guy back. They were saying, come on, come, come, it's ready, you're ready to come. But they were not speaking in English. It was, they were speaking in Hungarian or Albanian, something like that. What he didn't know was the man was from Hungary. And that was his native language. That night, he experienced the touch of the divine. He experienced this transition from earth into heaven that Joy and I talked about. That she was ready to make that transition from earth to heaven. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. This is the everlasting hope that we hope for. We believe that nothing will separate us from the love of God. You see, I've seen too many miracles here on earth. And to know that we can and we will make that transition from earth to heaven. That we can greet every new day with the fullness that says, thank you God for this day, a gift. God bless you and God loves you.
Let us pray. Lord, we do not like the end of things. We do not like leaving or quitting or dying or ending. We like living. We want to be full of life. And you did not like death. You asked that it not be happened to you. You lived though as death would not be the end. You lived as though life would be stronger than the grave. And this is what we need to know. This is how we live our life. So Lord, resurrect us each moment of the day. Bring hallelujahs and surprises and give us grace and help us to believe, even when we want not to believe. Lord, teach us your ways and give us glimpses of the divine so that we can stand in your light. Lord, bring your life into our life. The prayer that you taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory, forever and ever. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Joy. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming, Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and the glorious company of the saints of light. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace in the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>